Well, hello there and good day. Thank you for joining me. I am Frost PDP, and today we're talking about Brigandine, the Legend of Renarzia, and five things that I'd like to see in or see added to this new game coming out hopefully in June. Please keep in mind that many of these suggestions may involve DLC, so if it's not there in the base game, don't worry about it. It can always be added. Number five on this countdown is a possible quest flowchart because I'd like to see questing improve from where it was in Legend of Forcina and Grand Edition, which is really just random number generation. Uh, you send your knight out, they do a thing, you get a result. No, instead, uh, you can have it where you can send your knight to do one of four things, and over the course of those four things, uh, they might be, number one, practicing your skills, where they might gain experience, gain in an attribute, or get wounded. You can send them to search for an artifact where they could also get wounded in the search, or they can find an artifact. It could be a minor item, medium item, or major item. And by artifact, I mean something you can equip, something like a sword or a shield. Uh, you can send them out to recruit knights where they might find a quest knight that's only unlockable through quests. You might find a defeated opponent. You might find nobody, and the game will tell you if there's no knights available to find so you don't waste your knights repeating this all the time. But then again, that doesn't mean you might not find another knight later that is available. Or they might get wounded on the quest. And finally, consumables. Uh, you're sitting in an alchemy lab making potions. And you might make a common item, or you might make a rare item, or you might have your still blow up in your face because you tried to make moonshine wrong. Either way, the whole idea behind this flowchart is, hey, here's a way to at least add some player choice into the mix so that I, at least you know what you're sending your knights out for. Number four in our countdown is more unit promotion options. So Grand Edition and Legend of Forcina had many units which only had one tier two promotion option. I'm thinking of you, Mandrakes. And other monsters required special items to evolve, which again, getting items was determined by random number generation or RNGesus as we call it. So I've given two examples here of ways you can sort of expand upon unit promotion. Example one just allows more tier two options, right? You've got a critter, maybe it's a rock, and it can turn into four different forms. It can turn into a fire rock, like a fire bird, a water critter, like some sort of waterfowl, like a giant duck, I don't know, a nature critter, which would be like a thunderbird, and a non-elemental version, which is just a bigger rock. And you can theoretically have tier three on top of that. So your rock becomes a fire bird, becomes a phoenix, allowing for more evolution options, which is just an interesting differentiator. On the right, we've got example two, which is just giving more tier three options. So think about your holy giants and your unholy giants. Think about if there was a way to have a tier three holy giant that turns into a dark giant, or a tier three dark giant that turns into a holy giant or turns into a fire unholy giant, or something like that. You know, just by having more tier three options, you allow the game to have more late game differentiation. In other words, building up more units of the same class is a little more beneficial to you. Number three on the countdown is improved cross-classing for knights. I've included a little screen cap from the Brigandine website just because I want to highlight that it does seem to indicate cross-class is possible. Uh, the witch there has a level 20 or higher requirement and a sorcerer's proficiency of 5. So that's interesting. But in Grand Edition and Legend of Forcina, cross-classing was largely a concealed mechanic. You could only identify if you understood what the stars above a knight's head meant, and that includes the expert header. Uh, these stars are similar to what they're using in LOR called proficiency, but what I'd like to see is for it to be possible to earn proficiency points even after reaching your maximum level, which I'm assuming is 30, to allow characters to complete their cross-classing rather than accidentally over-leveling characters in combat. If you've ever been level 20 and wanted to switch and then had to not level your character to level 21 in order to switch so you don't accidentally get a level in a class you're already expert at, you know what I'm talking about. It gets really frustrating to micromanage your XP that much. And I'd like to see that system overhauled so at least you can get a few extra stars in case you accidentally overlevel once or twice. That way you can still max out your character and not feel like you're leaving anything on the table for any kind of final battles you might have. Speaking of, number two is a Cave of Trials. This is not the challenge mode, which still sounds really awesome, and I strongly suggest you check that out, but... 
Uh, this is more similar to the Bone Oil of Snake of Chaos fights, assuming there is no end boss in this game. I don't know if there's going to be or not. These are hard fights, but your deaths or item losses like Lapis's are not permanent, so you can retry as many times as you want from a given save file. Uh, the goal here is to provide a standardized encounter to face with increasingly complicated and creative battles. It allows speedrun combat, where you use as few turns or actions as possible and challenge your friends to that sort of thing. We've seen this with the Bone Oil fight before online. YouTubers have just a huge, who can be the fastest to beat Bone Oil? And that's great because it encourages you to play different styles and to play more of the game. And by the way, with this Cave of Challenges or Cave of Trials, new challenges can be added as DLC as time goes on. You start off with three or four challenges, you come up with a few more, maybe you take some player feedback into account, then you turn around and you put out a DLC. Oh, here's, by the way, on top of all the other stuff in this DLC is three more trials. Go have fun, because why not, right? That's what the game is for. Number one on our countdown, last but not least, is multiplayer. And an upfront note, multiplayer was added to Bring Ding Grand Edition when it was made. And they took Legend of Forcina and added stuff to it. That's how they got Grand Edition. So this proves that such a mode can be implemented in a game that's already released, presumably via DLC. There are two forms of multiplayer that can be done. There's campaign, which is just like GE's mode, where in each player takes control of a country, it could be the Shinobi, you could have one person play as North Zalio, whatever, and then you play the game out normally. Or you can do a draft pick, where players pick three knights and a set of monsters up to a certain power level, similar to rune cost for an individual squad, and duke it out on a pre-made map. And why, yes, Happy Knight, you can use this idea with credit. I'm down with that. So here's the complete list. Five is a better quest system. Four is more tier two and three options. Three is improvements to cross-classing. Two is a cave of trials or challenges system. And one is multiplayer in one or maybe even two formats. What do you want to see in Brigandine Legend of Renersia? Leave a comment. Discuss it on the Brigandine engine, the Discord, the wiki, and the subreddit. And that's it for me. Um, I want to thank the Happy Net Brigandine English website. I want to thank uh, Legend of Rene uh, Forcina for the music. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like, share, subscribe, friend, follow, whatever buttons. It really does help the channel grow. It lets me know what you're watching so I can keep making more of it. And I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Let's Plays are going to continue being uploaded. It's just a matter of me getting through the process and unfortunately it's just a slow grind and it's just not always the funnest thing for me to do when I have other stuff going on. So yeah, hit me up. We'll talk Brigandine or whatever else you want to talk about. And as always on this channel, La Paz.